you do. You bring it on your children. Because the things that you got going on on your in your life, guess where it comes from? It comes from the things your mama and what your daddy did. See, you ain't got you don't even know, you ain't even know why you was depressed. You ain't even know why you were insecure. But if you look at your family line, if you look if everybody in the family was a hoe, now you can understand why you a hoe. Come on here. If everybody in the family was a drug addict, and then now you find yourself on drugs, it's because it's a generation of curse. And it all came down upon you because of the simple fact is you are not looking at these spiritual laws. See, God said this is not the season to be lazy. See, it's a different, it's a different between being in church and being in the kingdom. See, being in church, I can just sit here and watch the preacher preach uh, a well uh, uh, and all of that. And you going straight to hell. Because that's what I would do. Going to the club, singing in the choir. This, and I didn't know no word. Give my money to Shaka Zulu. Then singing like that. I'm blessed in the city. Not knowing. Because I wasn't reading the Bible. In the church, my pastor wasn't teaching me nothing. But when I got in the kingdom, I understood that I got to read. I understood that I got to pray. I understood that if I want to break free from these habits that I had, that I was going to have to fast. Yes. I understood that I had a part to play. That God wasn't just going to sprinkle no dust on me and I was going to change. That I had to do my part in order for God to change my life. Yeah. That's why you keep hearing me say, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Because church will pacify you. We're a bunch of people. We're a bunch of babies. We got grown up bodies. But we've been in the church and we letting somebody open your mouth, baby. That's what we're doing. And God's saying, wait a minute, that about the dysfunction? But you're trying to beat the brains out your child. Why you ain't getting this math? Why you ain't listening to the teacher? And God said, why are you beating that child because you ain't listening to me? How you want the child to listen to you, but you ain't listening to him? It's out of order. It's never going to work if you're not obedient to him. And they ain't going to never be obedient to you. Because you got to understand, I don't care. You may not want to be your children model, but say I'm my children model. My children model. You your children model whether or not you know it or not. Yes. You may tell them don't smoke. Come on here, but get what they're going to do. Smoke. smoke. Why? Because they see you smoke. Yeah. They're going to do whatever you see because you know why. When I was younger, I used to be driving like a hot, just cutting up. So when I got saved and I started living right, I wonder how my daughter knew how to do some stuff she ain't never seen me do. <laughs> But when I look at my family lineage, everybody dropping like hot. Everybody just taking to, you know, they cutting up. And I'm saying, my sister, she never seen me do this. How come she doing it? Say bloodline. Bloodline. Because it's in my bloodline. Because when I got saved, I had to learn how to break them curses. Because stuff that I was doing, I said, I don't want my children on that. And I had to break it off my bloodline. And I had to put the blood of Jesus over it in order to make a new bloodline. Does that make sense? Yes. So go back and read the story. Second. So you got to understand what is your leprosy. Turn your Bibles to Romans 10. See, you got to honor God. Because see, when you honor God, come on here, God is going to bless you. And he's going to cause people to honor you. He said that this is a season where people overlook you. But those that honor me, they're going to honor you. Come on here. But when you're dishonoring me, that's why people are dishonoring you. When you look at Romans 10, let's look at verse 1. He said, brothers, my heart desire. He said, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites. Every time you see Israelites, he's talking about my children. My children is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law so that they may be righteous for everyone who believes. So in other words, this scripture is saying you got to stop being righteous to yourself. You know how you may say, uh, God know my heart. 
And somebody tell you, no, you got to stop doing what you're doing. God said, this is not the day to keep talking about this is my truth. This is how I see it. He said, because when you're in the kingdom of God, you don't have a say so. He said, it's time out for you having a, you not having a knowledge of what his words say. Because when you don't know what his words say, God said, you ain't representing me. You represent your own. Because you got to understand, when you're in the kingdom of God, you are expected to look like God. Does that make sense? So just like how Elijah, Elijah had the same kind of power of his leader, but he had a double portion of it. So if you're a God child, when you're praying for people, people should be able to feel the power of God, and their life should be able to change. If you're around people, you ain't praying for nobody. Nobody ain't getting saved. You ain't ministering to nobody. Are you really God's child? You see what I'm saying? This is where you got to put up or shut up. Because even in the game, you got to prove your loyalty. Right? If they say go kill somebody, they want somebody to go kill somebody. Jesus tell them, I want you to save people. I want you to pray for people. I want you to know if somebody hurt you, you're supposed to do something about it. So if you ain't doing nothing about it, guess what you're doing? You're breaking spiritual laws. Every time we see somebody hurt and you don't do anything, you're bringing dishonor to the kingdom of God. See, church ain't telling us that. They making you think it's about the preacher. It ain't about the preacher. It's the preacher's job to teach it to you. But we're supposed to be helping people. Second point. God said, I got to kill the spirit of pride in you. Turn your Bibles to Leviticus 26. Don't let the spirit of sleep just get on you. Because the enemy don't want us to manifest. When you look at verse 14. Leviticus 26 verse 14. He said, but if you would not listen to me and carry out these commands, and if you reject my decrees and abhor my laws and fail to carry out all my commands and so violate my covenant, then I will do this to you. So in other words, he said, if you don't do what my Bible says do, you don't follow the laws, you don't follow the rules, this is what I'm going to do to you. I will bring upon you sudden terror, wasting disease, and fever that will destroy your sight and drain away your life. You will you will plant seed in vain because your enemy will eat it. I will set my face against you so that you will be defected by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you, and if you will flee, even no one is pursuing you. If after all this you do not listen to me, I will punish you for your sins seven times over. 